Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bishop's RV up in Coopersville, Michigan today, uh, just outside of Grand Rapids, taking a look by your popular request at a little Riverside 165. Now I have uh, done some coverage on a couple of their little, what I call towable truck camper 135s, and you folks at home said, listen, you gotta take a look at some of their uh, little bit bigger models, although <laughs> none of these are very large. This thing actually uh, tops out just about 3,600 pounds, total maximum weight, loaded cargo and everything. So it's the kind of thing where like, if you got like a 5,000 pound tow rating this could be a really nice little fit for you and always leave you a nice little buffer in case you had to like put the hammer down to try to get into some traffic or something like that it's a simple small little glamper it's got that kind of classic little 1950s sock hop and diner feel to it checkerboard floors and you have your choice on the outside of that sea foam uh kind of color we're seeing today or a, uh, a ruby red i'll see if i can't maybe scrounge around the lot and find you a couple other color samples before we uh wrap this thing up today um it's seven and a half foot wide so it's not much wider or, or really might not be any wider than than your vehicle i do always run uh recommend tow safety mirrors on us now again it's a simple camper it's not a big off-grid off-road heavy duty tire suspension mega holding tank solar camper it's none of that it's just if you just want to get out you know if there's just a couple of you or if you're just a solo run around or you don't need something big you don't want something big this would be an awesome fun little weekend getaway kind of camper here as we go through let me know what you like and what you dislike and if you appreciate how we get you all kinds of crazy different stuff on this channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get going. Now, if you've never seen one of these, the cute little retro thing um, isn't really a fad with these guys. It's more of a lifestyle. And you see the outside matches the inside. So if you get the, uh, I don't know, sea foam, the teal, whatever we call this, you know, it persists all the way through the RV inside and out. Now, I like to tell you the good with the bad. Um, and this is an RV that, you know, it's not made to be the biggest, flashiest thing. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Some people are like, man, listen, I just want to, I don't want to go broke doing this. I want to get something simple, straightforward, and casual and fun. Well, that might be what this one is right here for you. So, you know, it had a little, well, let me back up a little bit. Over here on the right-hand side, that's where a TV hookup would be on the wall. But I don't think a lot of people are buying this camper to watch TV. Similarly, these have a six foot three interior. They have a smaller ceiling height than most travel trailers, uh, which means, you know, if you're uh, bigger like me, you might feel a little cramped at times. And if you're feeling cramped, I mean, what? Didn't your mom ever teach you not to jump into the pool right after you got done eating? Everybody knows you need to wait a little bit. Oh, I just noticed something. I think this is potentially important. Right over here on the side of the counter, right next to the bed where I'm laying currently, you have household and USB plugs. You know, kind of handy for phone charging, I do suppose. I also like that you can literally lay in bed and just reach over and brush your teeth. I mean, that's cool. I don't even got to get out of bed in the morning to start getting ready for the day. Now suddenly, who doesn't feel like a loser? This guy, that's who. And I tell you what, nothing makes you feel like a loser like accidentally oversleeping and waking up at the crack of noon when you're supposed to be somewhere. I haven't done that in a long time, but uh, the other day I did almost miss a flight when apparently in my sleep I just shut the alarm off. I'm uh, Apparently I'm, I'm pretty good for that. I don't sleepwalk, I just sleep turn off the snooze button. Anyway, now you see some power outlets over there. Handy little spot for those. I'm kind of wondering, should they be below or above that dinette line right there? So, like, you know, you, you could always use it right now for, like, you know, phone chargers, but I don't know. Should it be above? I don't know. Anyway, you guys tell me. Um, let's take a look at this thing. So, as you see, there is storage below those benches, and that, that can form into a sleeper. So, this is a decent solo camper. It uh, could be a couple's camper. You could have a guest or a big dog or something over here, or maybe just some buddy kind of camping where you've got a little bit of separation space going on now if you notice this has a six cubic foot gas electric two-way fridge i don't believe they're offering a, uh, a 12 volt variety from this factory at this time i'll be shocked if that doesn't change over the next season or two however the backsplash is nice i would criticize them for not putting a side splash on but they don't have any sides on their kitchen for me to criticize so i guess there's nothing to criticize there i was i was very surprised though an oven instead of uh you know just a just a stove top or whatever that's a rare find i swear in a single axle camper um the one thing this rv is missing bar none is drawers in terms of quantity technical spiking tank got none <laughs> and they put a shelf 
over the bed up here. I kind of wish that was a cabinet, but I get that they're being light, they're being less expensive. I could always go to like Walmart or Target and get some of those little storage bins or wicker baskets or something like that. I could make that work. You do have the headboard uh, storage chest right there. By the way, if you wanted to take that out, you could slot a 60 by 80 True Queen bed in this because in its current format, it is a short queen. They list theirs as like a 60 by 76 or something weird like that. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's just a generic um, camp queen bed. Anyway, there's always some manufacturers, and I'm not knocking them, I'm just pointing out, like KZ will often refer to their camp queen beds as a 60 by 75. Somehow one inch better than a 60 by 74 that everybody else uses. Although I've never actually been able to discern any... By the way, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. It doesn't matter. Um, that big, that hutch next to the toilet, that's actually the wheel well. But I also think that's a perfect place to be able to set a couple rolls of toilet paper if you need it. Maybe like a little tray there to be able to hold your shampoos and your body washes next to the shower, you know, when you're done in the shower, something like that. By the way, though, that is not shower surround paneling. That is just wall paneling. You are going to need to uh, wipe that down when you're done or, well, and or, you could actually do kind of like what uh, these folks asked us to do because the RV that I'm in actually is uh, being purchased in the very near future and the folks asked us to go ahead and upfit a big XL vent fan into this thing. So again, I, I say this all the time, if you're looking at a camper and it doesn't have a certain widget that you're looking for, chances are we can usually add that widget. And if a camper doesn't have any slides, is it never in road mode? Or is it always in road mode? Please be specific. This is an actual question. Now, we're wedged in here at a funny angle, kind of between a, uh, a camper to our left and the building to our right. Um, neither of which are going to be easy for me to move right now. I haven't done my bench presses in ever. Uh, you know, I'd go to the gym, but I don't want to get too big. <laughs> Power Tongue Jack was actually a surprising find on the front of this. Um, you might notice also four corner stabilizer jacks. It's still baffling to me. How many travel trailers come with only rear stabilizer jacks on a single axle? Single axles frankly, pretty much need the most stabilization, and yet there's a lot of brands that outfit them with the least. Now, this is seven and a half foot wide, so it's a little bit narrow without being super duper narrow, and that extra little space really helps on the inside. So they're not super big. Again, they're not very heavy. At maximum, they're just over like 3,600 pounds total weight, and if you remember from our early on floor plan and a flash footage, if you look up top there, you can get these from the factory with a surprisingly good solar package, uh, a lot more than I would expect. Now that is optional, that's not standard. These will always have at least a portable prep plug where that solar panel can be really nice as if you just have a battery on it like we do right now actually. Um, it'll just keep that battery tended and topped off when you're not using it. Not a giant awning, but not a giant camper. They gave us all the space they could. I'd prefer if the speakers were lower, especially on an aluminum skin trailer where running wires through the wall is exceptionally easy. And um, something I didn't mention, well, I've mentioned bef uh, already that you have a couple different exterior color schemes. The accents in the wheels and even the interior decor will follow along with uh, whichever exterior color palette you're getting with it. Now, uh, over here under the bed, you know, it's just... It, frankly, there might be more cargo space under the bed than there's living space inside the camper. It's just, I mean, as open as it possibly could be in here. It doesn't have a magnet hold back though, but that's actually not a really difficult thing to add if that's something that you're looking for. By the way, if you're looking at this, you're like, holy crap, man. You know, it's like the rear bumper is all but dragging on the ground. Well, the, the RV is not level. Where they have this parked here when I came to visit our store, uh, the uh, the nose is still up a little bit. It could be cranked down. Now, there's no ladder on the back. There's also no factory accommodations for a ladder, but it is a walkable roof. So that is one of the nice things uh, on there. And I am glad to see that it does at least include a spare tire. Again, shocking how many little campers don't include something. I think because they, a lot of people would assume it includes that, so maybe they're trying to, I don't know, hoping to slide one past somebody. I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, um, full outside utility shower and black tank flush. Again, a couple surprisingly nice features on this basic little guy. Now, as promised, I got you a look at one of the other color palettes they have available. Now, this is one of their smaller little 135 models. If you're kind of curious, like, where's the door? I've got a whole separate video on that thing, and I'd love to know. What do you prefer, the ruby red or... 
I don't know, seafoam green. What what color what color is this? Like I'm just a stupid guy. I'm not good with colors. I only know the names of the eight colors that come in the basic eight pack of crayons. I never learned the 72 pack of crayons. I don't know what Bert Umbert or whatever is. What what is the name of that color? It doesn't matter. Why do I always get off topic? Regardless. Thank you for tuning in today. I'll leave you a link to check for pricing and availability, and I'll quit rambling. Take care, stay safe, have fun. Happy camping, everyone. Thank you.